Joining us now for a special look at the recent developments around Steinhoff International, we joined from Ashburton Investments by Wayne McCurry, and we joined by Etienne Retief, who is with the South African Institute of Professional Accountants. Thank you so much to both of you for your time uh, today. Massive drops over the past couple of days, uh, Wayne, in this particular share. What is the scale of this thing? I mean, does it have <coughs> the potential to be the largest corporate scandal? I think it. Well, I think it is the largest corporate scandal that, that that's happened. I mean, there's been plenty of corporate scandals and there still will be in the future, but this is the largest sort of, the largest one I know of for sure. And I mean, whatever we discuss and whatever everyone else has discussed, understand, we actually know very little. And there's very little real mm. fact. All that we know is there are definitively accounting irregularities. There's no alleged that yeah. there are, and that the scale of it in respect of the valuation of assets is six billion euro. They sign off have told us that, yeah. but that's all we know. Now, for something of that scale to, yes. to happen and to come out now to lead to the, the share price collapse, collapse yep. to lead to the losses that we've seen, um, uh, to lead to the resignation Correct. of um, someone like Marcus Uester, what could, how big could this be? What, what sort of account? Well, look, one thing, I've, one thing I've, I've, I've known that six billion is only the starting number. It, it, it will go up because, I mean, if the auditors, the chairman, the audit committee, the board of directors didn't know what's happening and have only been looking at this for one day, there's more to come out. But there's only two things that can, that could have had, that, mm. that could be wrong here. One is they inflated profits illegally or they inflated the value of the assets illegally. Okay. So those are the one of the two. And I think the current legal court cases that they involved on, I think those are small in comparison to these accounting irregularities. They might be related, but there's still significantly more negative information to come out. And that's why you've seen the share price. I mean, the share price peaked, oh, I don't know, a year ago at 97 Rand, yeah. and it's now 11, 10, 11 Rand. All right, let's bring in Etienne into this conversation. Uh, Etienne, this is obviously massive. People are starting to ask questions about uh, the auditors, the accountants. Um, Steinhoff did come out yesterday and said uh, that the CEO, CFO stays in place. He's just resigned as CEO of STAR, uh, the African subsidiary. But the who do who, who can we point at here we're talking about accounting irregularities surely somebody should have blown a whistle at some point well it's still early days so we we don't fully understand uh, how this irregularities have have come about and how they've been reported but the uh, the basis is that it means that the financial statements that people rely on from shareholders to creditors to other people you do business with um, that is potentially compromised and because you use that information to make decisions and you need to be able to put reliance to that yeah. so yes there is questions that could come uh, along the way as to uh, well how did this creep through why was this not identified earlier the um, but there are many ways that that uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it was an audit fault or uh, a fault in terms of that reporting. That might very well have been part of uh, uh, let's call it prop uh, or, or manipulation within the rules that allowed for that to to happen. The irregularity itself is uh, well. We don't really know enough to be able to to kind of point a finger, but I think the starting point has to be at the top of the com at the company, because that is where the starting point from valuing assets yeah. to um, signing those financial statements to making the declarations that, that come with uh, to shareholders and to creditors uh, actually starts from. But surely, if you have um, the auditor like Deloitte saying we're not going to put our name to this. Um, and, and we can't sign off on this, then it, it must be mm. something worse than that. Why are we calling this accounting irregularities? Why don't we call it what it actually is, fraud and corruption? Well, I think it's still early to, to call it fraud and corruption um, uh, because those are, are uh, actually quite specific terms, um, especially when, when you're looking at fraud, there is uh, uh, even an illegal activity to it where s some irregularities might not be uh, necessarily fraud. It might actually just be a non or non-conformity to, let's say, accounting principles or um, 
uh, uh, you might even find that, uh, for instance, that the, there's discretion in how one would, let's say, recognize a certain asset or a connected party transaction. It doesn't mean that it is uh, a fraudulent transaction. It just means it does not comply with what is expected of that uh, accounting practice or the prevailing standard. Um, and the reason for those standards is so that we can have consistent and comparable yeah. information to rely on. And that's where it starts with. I think the question of whether it's fraud and corruption, uh, those would come once we know more information. Because there then has to be a, that, that attachment to the deliberate um, intention for that misrepresentation yeah. to lead to a, uh, a, another event, uh, perhaps allowing yeah. a transaction to go through. And we know that you know, the German um, prosecutors are busy investigating. They're investigating the actions that are of um, some of the executives. They're investigating um, that data. So we're going to touch on a few of those things, and we'll um, come back to you, uh, Wade, and talk a little bit about the impact of this, and particularly on uh, shareholders. Our discussion is going to continue in a moment. and when we